Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Evelyn, written by James Joyce. Now, before I go into summary and analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, this work by James Joyce is very interesting. Um, it all basically starts off with this woman by the name of Evelyn. Um, Evelyn is this woman that um, she's living a life where she's not too happy. Um, her mom has passed away, and she she's she's living in the past. Um, she's thinking about the past. At the beginning of the short story, Evelyn is basically telling us how things were. You know how when she was little her neighborhood was different there was a field where she could go and play with the um the kids um in her neighborhood and and all the hijinks and all the things that they used to get involved with um and her and she talks about her early relationship with her father and how her father was her father but you know at least her mother was there um she talks about um how those times were better the times of when she was a kid they were better and for a lot of adults, sometimes adults will reflect on things like that. A lot of adults will say, well, life was better when there were kids, when you had no responsibilities. You know, you didn't have to take care of people. You didn't think you didn't have to think about success or um, um, or making it in the world. You just had to be a kid and have fun, enjoy your summers and things like that. So Evelyn, although she's a grown woman at this point, um, you know, she, she's just thinking more about when she was a child, when, when her mom was alive, when her brothers and sisters, you know, when her siblings were in the house, when, you know, she just had to be another child in a house filled with children and her parents were, you know, were together and things were great. You know, those, for a lot of people, again, for a lot of people, a lot of people, childhood is the best time, um, of life. Um, it's not until when, when you get into the adulthood and when you have to, you know, pay your bills and pay for stuff and, and worry about what tomorrow will bring um, until you um, you get into uh, the life is hard type of uh, reality or type of sayings. So Evelyn is very much in the past. Um, her, the house now is very quiet. You know, all her siblings have moved out and have families of their own. Her father is is verbally abusive or or angry and and you know she he's not the best father. Um, she keeps remember the, remembering the promise that she made to her mom about taking care of the family, um, and she's just sitting by the window and and thinking about those old times and thinking about the past. So just like how the neighborhood of the past is, is an antique, just like how the house is an antique. You know, Evelyn's kind of like an antique. She's sitting and she's noticing that, you know, a lot of the things in the house are dusty. And, you know, in some ways, from my perspective, when I'm reading this, I'm like, man, Evelyn's kind of dusty. You know, she's she won't move on from the past. Her mind is stuck in the past. She doesn't have, a, well, she has a boyfriend, uh, but it doesn't seem like this, that's going to go far. Um, she's stuck with her father, you know, telling her what to do and abusing her. Um, and, you know, kind of like bullying her and her and she's like, you know, my brothers don't even check up on me like they should. So she's judging her family, judging. She you know she's like the person in that neighborhood, judging that neighborhood, thinking about the past, thinking like, kind of almost wishing that she could go back to the past, um, looking around her house and how dusty it is and wondering like where all the dust is coming from. And to me, she's just an antique. She's just that child that just, you know, a, a lot of parents have that type of child where let's say you have, you know, three or five or, or 10 children. And um, let's say they all move out and there's that one kid that never moves out that pretty much at some point goes to live in your basement and just becomes a permanent, a permanent part of the house. Evelyn is that permanent part of the house where she's comfortable at home. She's wish she wishes that she could go back to being a child, um, and she's she's just doing her her household chores. Um, she has kids in her care. She cooks and cleans and takes care of her father. She she does like you know the the duties that you know she would she would have to do to take care of the household. Um, and she, she's kind of not too happy about this, but she does have to give her father a lot of her money, 
Um, sometimes he gives it back, sometimes he doesn't. So um, that's her life, and it's not too much of a happy life. And, and, and again, uh, time and time again, she keeps bringing us back to the past. Now, she does have a boyfriend by the name of Frank within this work. Um, and she's planning to run away with Frank and, you know, that whole, you know, ha happily ever after type of story where you go off with your significant other, you know, start a family, have a nice, you know, white picket fence house and, and, you know, the, the, the beautiful American type of dream of, of, you know, uh, husband, wife, children, white picket fence, you know, that beautiful staple of American dream, uh, type of life. Which you know, it's amazing. It, it, there's 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 a lot of, uh, of of nobility and honor and and happiness that's related to that happy family statute. Um, uh, but uh, the the way that Evelyn is going about it, she's thinking she that she wants that she wants um, to be with this this boyfriend of hers. She wants to sort of family, but at the same time, she's she's kind of afraid because she's kind of like. Um, uh, a mouse that's like in, in in its hole and it's kind of like nook and the mouse is kind of like afraid to step out um because as soon as the mouse steps out maybe it might get killed or eaten um so evelyn's very comfortable in her house that she's lived in all her life and now here comes this sailor this guy that's telling her well you need to come with me we're gonna start a family we're gonna go sail on the sea and i have a new home and a new place and a new area for you and all you have to do is leave your father that's most likely going to die and leave your family home that's mostly gonna wither away and you're, all the things that you've known all your past memories are never going to come back and it's almost like anxiety you know Evelyn is very you know she goes off into anxiety because she doesn't know what to do she even starts to kind of like ask God to make a choice for her so she's like this 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 caged animal where She's an animal that's been in a habitat all her life, and now she is being pushed out because, yes, she does want a boyfriend, she does want a family of her own, but at the same time, she's, she has she has her head stuck in the past. And, um, wow, yeah, she has her head stuck in the past, and she doesn't know what to do, so she's asking God to help her. Um, her father's not helping her, even though her father gives her some advice, um, um, yeah, the father's not really doing a good job of helping her. And um, basically, um, the father tells her, you know, don't go with this guy. Don't don't start a romance. Don't go and marry him. You know, don't. this is a trick. This guy might just be, you know, tricking you and, and trying to get you all, you know, get you and, and probably... Um, sleep with you and then you know the the old advice that fathers would probably give their children because like the father's like stop talking to him i don't want you talking about talking to him or anything you know put an end to this and uh evelyn doesn't know what to do you know she's she's trying to think about what well, do i just leave do i abandon my father do i abandon my mother the promise i made to my mother and all these types of things so she's stressed out she's stressed out she doesn't know what to do she doesn't know how to think Ultimately, she on the day on the rendezvous that she has with this 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 boyfriend of hers, and they're gonna go off together. You know, she's she still doesn't know what to do, even though that her legs are moving towards the ship and her body's moving towards the ship. She's still wrecking her mind, and basically, what ends up happening is like the you know her boyfriend grabs her and and he's like you know we're courting, we're gonna start a family, all these wonderful things are gonna happen, and at the last minute she just panics. The anxiety is too much the stress is too much she just goes she, she's like she's just like holding on to the railing and she won't let go and she's like no 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 i'm not gonna do this i'm not gonna go with you i'm not gonna you know i'm just not gonna leave my home i'm not going to i'm not going to abandon my father i'm not you know so you know she was asking god for to to help her she didn't know what to do she she, you know, when you're in those stressful moments and you don't know what to do, you don't know what to say, you don't know what to think, you want a family, you want children, you want all these things in house and home and all that kind of stuff, but you also want to keep your promise, the promise that she made to her mother. She also wants to keep that and take care of her father and the children are in her care and take care of her family home and not leave all that behind. And she's also afraid of the great unknown. She doesn't know what's going to happen. What if this guy's a good guy? What if this guy's a bad guy? Anything could happen. So ultimately, she doesn't go anywhere, and 
at the last line or the last sentence of this this short story is kind of like Evelyn pretty much abandons and abandons abandons this guy and has no love for on, in her face for him. You know, she's just like, I'm not going. I'm just not going. And she's just, the story pretty much ends there with her not going with this guy. And um, we could we could pretty much, in terms of deeper meaning, in terms of analysis here, we can pretty much assume that Evelyn's going to go back to her house, take care of her father until he dies, and take care of the kids in her care until he dies. Maybe she'll find somebody else in her hometown. Maybe she won't. Maybe she'll just fade away into the dust in her house because just like how all her past, her house is filled with dust, the neighborhood's changing, like the present keeps on moving forward. Just like the guy, her boyfriend's getting on a ship and moving forward and her neighborhood's moving forward. Evelyn and the furniture inside of her house, all of her knickknacks, her life in the past, that's all in the past. Um, so she's going to stick to the past and keep remembering the times when she was just a child and... Maybe she'll fade into dust, just like the, the, the furniture and the old knickknacks and stuff are fading into the past uh, in her house. Maybe she'll start collecting dust, just like uh, the furniture within her house. Um, so that says a lot about Evelyn and, and what happens to her. Um, I mean, it says it says it has something to say about the time and, and Evelyn as a character. Um, and, and it says a lot about human beings as well, I think. Uh, human beings, some are willing to take risks and, and you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, some women would go with Frank and leave their father to die because pretty much the father's elderly, her father's elderly. If she leaves and if she's not taking care of him, I mean, he could try his best to take care of himself, but he's most likely would probably die. Um, and, you know, somebody else would probably take the family home if nobody's going to claim it. Um, so... There's, there's a lot going on here. Number one, she's a woman. She doesn't completely trust this man. That's her boyfriend. She doesn't know what's going to happen. Um, so stressful situations um, are stressful. I um, mean, it's, it's so stressful. There's so much anxiety that she goes to God. She's almost asking God to tell her, move her, shake her into doing what she needs to get done or to make a decision. Um, and ultimately well a decision is made her her nerves take over her panic takes over um you know this and 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 ultimately a decision to, is made for her to stay um some women some women are risk takers some women would would have gone with frank and and damn the past and damn her father and, and just forget about it uh some women would have taken that risk some women are like Evelyn, they, they don't want to lose their past. I mean, with one thing I know about women is that um, women do have sentimental value to certain things. Uh, that's why a lot of women do have knickknacks and necklaces and earrings and rings and, and things that they've kept on their entire lives. Um, women are in, 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 very sentimental to items and things and houses and homes and, and, and the past. Um, you know, a lot of women will keep um, t-shirts or, or rings or necklaces or or jackets from past boyfriends or past loved ones or um, I think men are a lot of men are like that as well but I think you see that mostly with women that will keep a, a, you know treasures from the past or treasures from things that are extremely invaluable and important to them um, because women do have a sentimental value um, men do have it also but but you do see that um, a lot with women, and so um, to Evelyn, losing all that was 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 you know huge. It wasn't something that simple for her, um, and and she knows her family, she knows her past, she doesn't know Frank, and in the future, going out going out into the future without a roadmap can be very troubling because humans we like our statistics, we like our patterns, we like our comfort. Um, and going out into the great unknown, going out to sea is just not comforting because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. There's no guarantee to us as to what's going to happen. Um, and so Evelyn just, you know, stays home. And um, a lot of women would choose to stay home just like Evelyn. And a lot of women would also probably take a risk and see what the world happens with Frank. I mean, Titanic is all about risk. And, and Rose just pretty much takes a risk with Jack. And, well, that one was not a good example of a risk taker because 
well, Jack ends up dead in Titanic. Um, Rose is uh, alive, though, and that's good. But, but yeah. So, this story, interesting. Um, it's deep in the sense that sometimes you do reach um, decisions that you have to make that are world-changing, world-breaking, uh, that are revolutionary. And in those moments, well, sometimes you do have to call, call to God to help you because you just don't know whether to take the right or the left. And um, those can be very, very difficult, difficult. Um, but yeah, that's my summary and analysis, in my opinion, about this work by, by James Joyce. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.